PR Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Weed Talk News. This is the C Block or the final section of this week's show. And now let's check in with California. That state's fair kicked off two weeks of activities and exhibitions this week. It also kicked off legal sales and consumption of cannabis in designated areas at the 350-acre Cal Expo site near downtown Sacramento. This is the first state fair to allow sales and consumption. There are strict age restrictions and controlled areas for now legal activities. That includes a 30,000 square foot area for consumption and sales of flour, concentrates, edibles, and topicals. In other California cannabis news, legendary rapper Snoop Dogg opened his first dispensary in L.A. near the airport. That dispensary is also launching a strain named after Tupac, the legendary rapper who was a big influencer of Snoop. One more California news item reported by Weed Week involves the arrest of a detective with the State Department of Cannabis Control, who was allegedly dealing guns and other weapons. The detective, Corey Harris, is charged with trafficking firearms and dealing and manufacturing firearms without a license. Each charge carries a maximum penalty of 15 years in prison. He has pleaded not guilty to the charges. Now, it is time to go north of the border to Canada to check with Debbie Facey with our Cannabis Report. This is Debbie Facey with the Canadian Strain of the Week. So what we have this week in Canada is the government responding to the questionable increase of 10 milligrams to 100 milligrams when it comes to our edibles. The market, I should say, has come up with the argument that with the lick market being out there and being able to provide up to and over the amount of 10 milligrams, it doesn't necessarily give the legal market a fair chance. That being said though, there still isn't enough research and development when it comes to bringing that to the OCS. So that is something that we will hopefully see, maybe when it comes to an increase, but I hope not that big of a jump just due to the fact that it will be something that could be detrimental to some of our consumers. Next what we have is British Columbia allowing sampling. So they are now allowing you to sample the products within a store licensing setting. Uh, This will obviously help a lot of consumers be able to know when it comes to cannabis for them, which ones they like, which ones they don't like. But at the same time, it will also give them a safe place to try it. So in case anything does go wrong, they're able to get help. Last but not least, we have is Sundial announcing that they are restructuring their team, which means layoffs. But in their eyes, they're looking at this way being able to skew down and be able to rework what they actually are failing at. And hopefully with that, create some sort of success and some rebuilding in the long run. This is Debbie Facey with your Canadian Strain of the Week. Peace. Remember a few weeks ago, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis aligned himself with the unregulated Delta-8 hemp-derived products in his state? He did that in order to counter the movement to legalize adult use of cannabis in that state that is being run by a group called Smart and Safe Florida that is spearheading the legalization ballot initiative. Well, now that unregulated market is embracing the governor's effort by throwing millions of dollars into defeating the ballot initiative. This is a prime example of why regulation of the same plant has to be streamlined and consistent. And that must start at the federal level first. Think about the millions of dollars that are being used to further one side or the other's agenda over the very same plant. Well, now it's time for the Garden State Cannabis Report. Here's Jill Goldsbury. Hello, Jill here with We Talk News New Jersey and the New Jersey Report. And here's what's been happening. A lot is going on this week and a lot is coming up. 
We have two very prominent New Jersey brands that are expanding and opening. If you've been following the journey of Tahir Johnson of Simply Pure, then you may have heard that Simply Pure Trenton is opening. They are having a grand opening event this week in their Trenton location. It's been a long time coming for this for this location and uh, this week, and we're in touch with this team. So we hope to be able to get in touch with, to hear and get a few words with him before the actual opening on the 20, July 27th. It will have, it will include a meet and greet with rapper Jim Jones and a few other details and surprises are coming up. Go on to their social media to check out more information on that. And we have another New Jersey brand in addition to Simply Pure. Uh, this is a woman-owned brand, Butter Cake, out of New Jersey, the edible brand with those delicious brownies that everyone's been raving about all over New Jersey in the dispensaries. The first New Jersey uh, brand to have a dispenser uh, to have a brownie at dispensaries in Jersey, and so. The big news with Butter Cake is they're preparing to launch in the state of Maryland. And this is set to happen very soon. From what I understand, the little birdies that are telling me I don't have exact dates yet, but it is set to launch very, very soon. So look out for that. And we're hearing that New Jersey is becoming the hub for cannabis education. And with that in mind, Stockton University has now become the first school in New Jersey to offer degrees in hemp and cannabis management. The curriculum is set to start this fall and New Jersey is set to, is, we're on pace to do about a billion dollars in cannabis sales this year. So the market is here and now we are set to be the leader in cannabis education with the first bachelor's degree program coming out of Stockton, New Jersey. And that's the news on New Jersey Cannabis. I'm Jill Goldsberry with your New Jersey Report. Thanks for watching. A relatively new feature of our weekly news show is our one-on-ones with various members of the Weed Talk News team. This week, the Shake Man, Kevin Shakir, meets up with a Colorado transplant in Arkansas. Here's Kevin. It is the Shake Man, Kevin Shakir, right here at Weed Talk News, and this is one-on-one -on -one at Chiba Hut. Yes, sir. Yes, we're here with Dane, the owner of Chiba Hut. That's right. The owner, I get to speak to him personally about all the things that's going on. And I know you got a lot. I've been seeing so many cars around here in Fayetteville. They, they stopped through, but they've really been stopping through. Why don't you elaborate a little bit on it, my man? Sure. This is uh, week seven that we're open. Uh, we've been absolutely blessed by the community here in Fayetteville. And the support has just been insane. I've been getting my butt kicked for seven weeks straight. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've been putting out a lot of good uh sandwiches and and more maybe oh, yeah. you can elaborate on man we do sandwiches toasted subs we do munchies which are our rice krispie treats and cookies our cotton mouth cures like kool-aid the only place you can get kool-aid on draft and we also do subs as salads too so any sub we got we can make it into a salad got great vegetarian options honestly you can throw a dart at the menu and you can't miss that's what i'm talking about and you can definitely tell that by the, how many cars are here and the happiness of the people they all leave with a smile every time i see them leaving they're, they're smiling some of them have bags most of them don't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes uh, you know there's there's some interesting things going on in in arkansas i'm coming here from california sure. so uh you know it's a little different for me but it's still it's still pleasant i know that the medical side is here um but the recreational is up for a vote how do you feel about that as far as you know uh, mm -hmm. what's going on and and the legalization, the Schedule 3 and all of it. Sure, and uh, I've been in the cannabis industry for the past seven years in Colorado. I still own two dispensaries and three grows. And I think Colorado really got it right when it comes to accessibility of cannabis. And I think that Arkansas definitely needs some retooling to make cannabis uh, more available to a lot more people. I feel like uh, they, it is very restricted here and a little monopolized. Um, I, I am new to the to the actual area, so it's it's hard for me to get an opinion right now. But I know that um, 
with the medical side, it's it's kind of it, it is restrictive, you know. And I think uh, just from some of the reporting I've done, um, you see where um, the the actual um, vigor to to vote it in and the actual amount of cannabis that 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 can't be gotten to, sure. you know, is really showing. So you have a, uh, I think the sales were down in June. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that, um, but as far as you know, the accessibility for patients is very minimal. Yes, uh, and I'm not 100% up to date, but back when issue six passed in Arkansas is when I got the heck out of here and went to Colorado to grow weed. That's pretty much was the deciding factor for me uh, and why I went to Colorado is because I did apply for a growing license here. Unfortunately, there was a lot of stuff that happened. <laughs> exactly. You can Google it, uh, but they only issued four grow licenses for the entire state and only 32 dispensary licenses with a maximum of two per county. And we just had one of them uh, actually have their license revoked. Uh, so, I'm not yes. familiar with that. Yes, I, I can tell you got, all yeah, about yeah, Colorado yeah, law. Yeah, that <laughs> but, just happened. I just reported on that. That was my last uh, report. Uh, and we'll be uh, going more in depptth about that. So sure. Yeah, did it have something that. to do with racketeering? Uh, it had something to do basically with just selling bad products. Oh, understood. So that's even that's, uh, you know, that's even, I, I don't know which one is the, the worst of two evils. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, well, you, got, you, you got a lot going on here, but I think that it, it's it's a slow process with that to, to change it. I know as far as the food industry, you're changing the the outlook on, you know, just the just the persona of the building, and that opens up, uh, I think, everyone's minds. You having a lot of folks move in from different areas? Yeah, exactly. So the goal of Chiba Hut is to destigmatize cannabis altogether. Uh, and that's what really drew me to Chiba Hut. You know, we like to tell people we are stoner professionals, not professional stoners. Ah. So this is definitely a family environment. Yes, we do have cannabis leaves up, but it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Everybody's welcome at the hut. That's wonderful. And, and like I said, it, it definitely has a, a, a welcoming environment. Um, um, is there anything else you'd like to elaborate on? Oh, yes. Um, we really believe in giving back to our community and pretty much just from the ground level, come in and try our food. But there's a reason why our food tastes so good is because we start, I mean, we're double the minimum wage right now at Chiba Hut mm. plus tip outs. Pretty much our starting beginning wage is $24 an hour. Oh, we definitely nice. believe in taking care of the people that work for us but just pretty much creating an environment where people are excited to come to work and build an actual family, not the stereotypical, you know, we're a family here where we work. No, I genuinely want to create an environment that people feel comfortable and they love coming to work. And that really translates into our food. We're also partnered with Smoke Out and Justice. So every year on Chiba Hut's birthday, we donate, um, I think it's 25% of our sales to Smoke Out and Justice. You know what Smoke Out and Justice is, is basically a group that gets um, people's records cleared off for non-violent non -violent drug offenses, mm -hmm. uh, specifically nice. cannabis. That's that's good. So basically, you're definitely giving back that away, and sure. and that's something that uh, that needs to definitely be addressed by all in in on a national level. So um, I know uh, with Schedule Three, there's going to be some changes going on. If we could go ahead and and get all the kinks worked out of there. Sure. That. Yeah, I just, uh, again, I I enjoy you uh, inviting me out here, Dane. Folks, I am going to try a sandwich. I don't know which one is going to be my favorite, but I will make sure. And he's going to film that. the whole thing and eat it from me. <laughs> That's right. I can't, so I can't fudge. Exactly. You see exactly. that. So you'll see, you'll see from start to finish with that. Yes. But again, this is Kevin Shakir with Dane the owner of Chiba Hut. We welcome Chiba Hut. And just in case you didn't know what Chiba standed for, it was marijuana in Mexico back in the day. That yep. was a little slang word that they had. So just wanted to add that in there too. Uh, again, for We Talk News, this is Kevin Shakir, uh, the correspondent out here in Arkansas. Uh, and you stay well, and we're going to do what we do right now and have a sandwich for you.
And finally tonight, there's another scientific research study focusing on sex and cannabis. The Journal of Psychopharmacology has published a study that concludes the relationship between cannabis use and sexuality is complicated. There are differences between the genders and with the amount consumed. First, it shares the research that the use of cannabis does lead to more sex and more enjoyable outcomes. However, the amount of cannabis is the key to reaching the best experiences. Too much cannabis can lead to dysfunction and less enjoyment, maybe a nap. So continue to experiment, but be aware of your doing so. It could inhibit your enjoyment. The research team at the Gonda Multidisciplinary Brain Research Center in Israel reports that, quote, cannabis has the potential to enhance sexual pleasure, reduce inhibitions, alleviate anxiety and share and promote intimacy and connection with sexual partners, unquote. So careful with uh, what you're doing, but it's, you know, worth the experiment between loving partners. Give it your best shot. Best of all, the report also claims that use of cannabis cuts down on domestic disputes and violence. Sounds like a plan worth pursuing, don't you think? Well, that's this week's Weed Talk News. I'm Elena Pinto. Remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. We'll see you next time. We are Pro Cannabis Media. Coming up on We Talk News this week, WNBA superstar and Olympic champion Brittany Griner gets busted at a Russian airport for carrying hash oil. Hi everyone, I'm Elena Pinto and this is Weed Talk News. Hey everybody, it's Brandon Jones with Bee Green Distribution with the Missouri Cannabis Report. I'm Karen Black from Greenfinger Consulting with the Arizona Cannabis Report. I'm Matthew Friedlander coming to you from the owner's office here at Skagit Organics. I'm Amy Carter from Michigan Weedsters. Hey, my name's Tom. Uh, you can find me over at Cannabis and Legalization News. I'm Jill Goldsberry with We Talk News New Jersey, and we are back. Andrew Berenger here reporting from Washington, D.C. Our Canadian correspondent with We Talk News, Debbie Fazy with the Canadian Talk of the Week. I'm Doug Miller from High on Wall Street with this week's Cannabis Stock Report for We Talk News. 